Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Daniela and today I will talk about the basic equipment you need if you want to start making beadwork. I'll also be sure uh, to add some tips and tricks I've picked up over the years of working with beads. Definitely a must-have is beading thread. Uh, when I was preparing this video I wanted to include all the information about threads here, but it was too much. Uh, the video would be too long, uh, so I made a separate video about threads. Uh, you can see the link up here. Uh, now I'll just summarize the basic information and if you want to know more details I recommend you to watch the other video. I definitely recommend using special threads for working with beads. The threads are mostly nylon and very strong. Don't try to break them uh, like a regular sewing threads uh, because the threads are so strong that they could cut you. I have here such uh, typical examples which in my opinion are well available and often used. For beginners I recommend Naimo or Eslon. Uh, the advantage is that they are cheap and easy to find and get. They come in many colors and several thicknesses. They differ in that Naimo has a rather round diameter, the Eslon is rather flat. Uh, I think the Naimo frays a little bit more and the Eslon twists more when working with it. Uh, such a universal size is D. I use the thread uh, thickness most often. I don't think you need a whole palette of colors to start with. Just have one light and one dark. A beige will work with all light and color beads and some dark color thread uh, such as navy or black will work great with dark beads. If you don't mind buying something a little more expensive, uh, the Toho Wanji thread is absolutely great. Its uh, thickness corresponds to Naimo B and it is very strong for its thickness. The advantage is that almost no knots form on it at all. Uh, knots on the thread during sewing are quite annoying. And the big advantage is that it doesn't fray. Uh, even when sewing with pressed beads or if you undo the stitches frequently. Another great thread is KO. Uh, its thickness also corresponds to Naimo B. And it has one interesting feature, and that is that it can be stretched, but it snaps back into position. Uh, so it's perfect for bangles. You will be able to stretch it over the knuckles, and then it will bounce back to the original shape. My favorite thread is Fireline. Uh, Fireline is a pre-vexed uh, braided cord consisting of gel spun polyethylene, which is known as the strongest fiber per diameter ever created. It comes in crystal, smoke and smoke gray color and in a wide range of sizes. I mostly use size 0.12 millimeters. It's pretty much stiff and rigid. Uh, it has a very good resistance to stretching and to breaking. It's very expensive, but excellent. If you want to save money, uh, don't buy it at a specialty bead store, uh, but at a fishing tackle store. This thread is originally intended for fishermen. I think what I like most about it is that it is firm and holds its shape. The beadwork doesn't fall apart under my hands during sewing process. So, if I had to rank these nylon threads from best to worst, according to my preference, the top spot would go to Fireline, then 1G, KO, Eslon and Naimo. But you may feel differently about it. Feel free to let me know down in the comments, I'm curious to hear your opinion. And now I've talked enough about threads and let's move on other supplies. Beading needles. I'll be brief here. Uh, we definitely need a special beading needle. A regular sewing needle is not enough because it's thick, has a big eye and uh, you can thread standard sized beads with a needle. The special beading needles are thin and have a narrow eye. They can be bought um, in different sizes, but I think if you buy a size 12 or 11 it will be fine. I think I use size 12 most often. You can buy a long or a short needle, it's up to you, what works better for you and what project you are sewing. It's a good idea to have more needles in your stash because sometimes you will break a needle. Seed beads. Well, this topic would make for several videos. 
I will definitely discuss this topic in detail in separate videos in the future. But today I will try to summarize it in a simple way. As far as size goes, there is a simple rule. The bigger number, the smaller the beads and vice versa. For beginners, this is a pretty crucial thing, so that you don't wonder what you actually ordered. I think the most commonly used uh, size is uh, 11.0, less so 8.0 and for such embellishments around 15.0s. Of course, this does not apply universally. Sometimes I will sew a project entirely in 15.0s and other times I will use a very large 6.0s. That's the beauty of it, it has no rules. I recommend uh, not to buy cheap no-name beads. You can't sew with them at all. They are irregular, each one is different and it just sucks. They are suitable only as complementary beads in embroidery, they are irregular in size and thickness. It will have problems when we are learning uh, to sew basic stitches. They don't fit well and, and deform. The brands I use most often are Preciosa, Mayuki, Toho and Matubo. Of course, there are many others. And as with threads, the beads vary in quality and price. Uh, here the comparison tables would be quite complicated because the price of beads is not only based on brand and size, but often also on color and finish. For example, some beads are plated, uh, some even use precious metals, so those prices are very high. But mm, I will try to be as objective as possible and uh, choose basic white opaque beads in size 11 for comparison. I used the prices I found on the Fire Mountain website. I would like to uh, add that between um, the planning of this video and the actual filming, uh, Fire Mountain removed the whole treasure from their offer, uh, but I left it in the table. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the best price is Czech Preciosa. And the most expensive was the Toho round. I checked on other sites uh, and it really came out that way. Of course, prices vary in different stores and often there are some discounts, so just take it um, as an interesting fact. We can't even completely follow the number of grams in the package because some beads are heavy, some are light, uh, some have thin walls and so on. Uh, so even though at first glance it may look like some beads are more expensive than others, it may not end up being that way uh, because the more expensive ones for the same amount of grams contain more pieces in the package, mostly because they are thin walled, which is a big advantage when sewing because you can thread the needle through the beads multiple times uh, without any problem. If you are just starting out with beads, it probably doesn't matter which brand you choose. Feel free to start with the cheapest Preciosa and you won't make a mistake. I personally use all brands of beads. Uh, I really like the cylindrical beads, uh, which are Mayuki Delica and Toho Treasure. I like how nicely they hold together. Uh, just watch out for the plated beads. In many brands, the plating peels off very quickly, uh, usually during the sewing process. So if you want to try beads that look like gold, silver, etc., go for beads with a permanent finish. As for the beads, be sure to buy uh, also other beads than seed beads to start with. Uh, I always keep some 3mm fire polished beads in my stash, um, they never go to waste. Uh, likewise glass beads and or some bicones. But it is better to choose a project you want to sew first and uh, then choose beads according to the instructions. Then you will get uh, the necessary experience, you will design your own patterns, and you will have more beads in your stash. I usually do this by digging through my boxes of beads and immediately I have an idea of what I could sew with these beads. There are a lot of ideas, but I still need to have about 48 hours in a day to keep up with everything. Buy special pliers for a start. You can do without them. At least three. Flat nose pliers, round nose pliers and side cutter. If you want to invest more, uh, buy the whole set. I've had this set from Beesmiths, 
uh, for a few years now and I'm very happy with it. It has everything I need. Uh, with flat nose pliers you can open jump rings and chain links. They are designed for making sharp bands and right angles in wire. With the round nose pliers you can make simple wire loops and wrapped wire loops. Clamp onto jewelry components with round nose pliers while you use flat nose pliers to do other tasks like opening a jump ring. This way you don't need to have uh, two pairs of flat nose pliers. And with a side cutter you can cut head pins, eye pins, wires, just anything. When it comes to findings it's good to have some basic pieces for making earrings, bracelets and necklaces. As far as earrings go uh, you will definitely find are uh, used for fish hooks and posts. Fish hooks uh, are the most common earring findings. Uh, some are simple, others are even decorated in some way. Uh, posts are the smallest type of earring findings. Uh, they are suitable for delicate earrings or ones where you want the clasp to be more subtle. If you are going to make pendants, uh, bales will definitely come in handy. Uh, there are many types. Uh, some just enable you to hang uh, beads, drops and pendants from chains and necklaces, uh, some threads through the hole in your pendant, uh, some are fold over. Then we have clasps. Uh, there are many different types. Uh, of the most basic ones I would definitely name toggle clasps. Uh, they are easy to use and come in a wide range of styles. Lobster clasps. Very basic. They can be hooked onto a jump ring or a split ring or even strung on a beaded loop on your jewelry. Uh, when I use lobster clasp I usually put an extension chain on the opposite side. The length of the jewelry can be easily adjusted. If you are making say a wide bracelet, uh, sliders are great. I also like to wear magnetic clasps myself. Uh, it's very easy to fasten, but you have to keep in mind that it can uh, snag on any metal objects and easily come undone and get lost. Even though I use strong magnets, uh, I do find that my bracelet comes undone from time to time. Uh, box clasps are often very decorative or with rhinestones uh, or various ornaments. I love using them in combination with pearls. It creates such a Victorian look. Also, split rings or jump rings will always come in handy. You can never have enough of those. So I have boxes like this in all sorts of colors and sizes. These rings can be used to attach other findings uh, to your jewelry. Uh, split rings are harder to open than jump rings, but cannot be pulled apart so they are much more secure. On the other hand, split rings are very easy to open and close. Uh, they are nice and quick to work with, but not as secure. I also use eye pins and head pins very often. Um, the purpose of both is the same. They stop your beads from falling off, but the different ends can be used for different purposes. Head pin is just a wire with a stop so it prevents your bead from falling off. And an eye pin has a loop at the end uh, so you can hang some beads there. I also often use crimps and crimp covers, mostly if I'm just stringing beads on wire. Wire guardians are also related to this. Uh, I'd rather show you in, in practice. I'm gonna string a simple necklace. I thread uh, the end through the crimp bead, wire guardian and back through the crimp bead. It's tighter, less abrasive and looks better. I squeeze it with crimp pliers and attach the crimp cover. Cut it off and I will thread the end through a few beads. And the bead caps and bead cones are also important. I use bead cones more for strung jewelry and I use bead caps for bead crochet ropes. If you are buying uh, base metal components, I recommend not building a very large stash as gold and silver color in particular oxidizes quickly, often in bags without being used. It is better to use, for example, stainless steel, but beware of the different types of stainless steel. Uh, for jewelry components, it is good to, uh, to choose 316L or 316VM stainless steel. 
As for the other basic things we need for making jewelry, uh, we must not forget the sharp scissors. Uh, just some small ones like manicure scissors. You don't have to have any special ones. Thread zap is also a useful tool. However, if you are just starting out or want to try beading techniques and are 100% convinced that mm, you are going to continue beading, I'd consider it an unnecessary investment. This is used for sealing the ends of synthetic threads. Uh, it will cut the thread without fraying, very close to the beadwork. You just have to be careful not to cut any threads you don't want to. Uh, but what I definitely recommend is the bead mat. It may seem like it's unnecessary, but it definitely makes your job easier. Uh, the beads won't roll around on the table and it will be easier to pick them up. Plus, uh, if you need to put your work away quickly, uh, just pick up the mat and store it somewhere. For example, when my baby wakes up, I just pick it up, put it on the cabinet so he can not reach it. And then I can resume in the evening when he goes back to sleep. So, and that's all for starters in a nutshell. I will certainly go into more detail about all the gadgets and beads in my next videos. Of course, if you have any questions or I've forgotten some basic stuff, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to fill it in in the future videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. And see you next time. Bye!